Amen. Amen. We give God the glory. This is another day the Lord has made. We have entered the second day of the month. The year is going towards your blessing. It's racing towards the promise. It's racing towards the second coming. It's racing towards the good thing. Don't let nobody scare you that time is going so fast and, and you are panicking. No, time is going for those whom have been redeemed by God. Amen. And always know that you are a special person. You are a peculiar person. Father, we thank you today. We bless you. Of course, you are good and your mercy endure forever. Amen. The word of God standeth sure. The Lord knows them that are his. And they that name the name of the Lord, the Bible says they must depart from iniquity. I want you to know that the Lord knows your name. He knows your in and out. And if you are a child of God, there is something about you that is different from anybody else. Because you were chosen before the foundations of the earth. Amen. God is not a man, so he sees you alone in the midst of the entire human population. Those who are born, gone, and yet to be born. Amen. My assignment today is found in the book of the Gospel according to St. John, chapter number 9, the division 25. John chapter 9, verse 25. The Bible says, I don't know whether he is a sinner. The man replied, but I know this. I was blind and now I can see. I know this, I was blind, now I can see. I want to talk to you about blessed in the dark. Blessed in the dark, amen. Um, it's interesting here, uh, there's a lot of politics and, and, and ego and uh, jealousy surrounding this particular verse. A man was born blind and Jesus met him and, and healed him and sent him to go wash his face. And he came back seeing and he became a huge problem in the church back then in the synagogue. And so the Pharisees were interrogating the life out of this man. They called the mother, they called the father. And so the whole thing was they were not happy for the man that he can see. That was the last problem. Their problem was, why are you seeing on the Sabbath? You've broken the law because you are look, you are you are well on the Sabbath. You are not supposed to see. Nobody's supposed to work on the Sabbath. So if your eyes has been opened by somebody, then the person has vowed. Isn't that it? Isn't that craziness? Isn't that craziness? I want to encourage you in the midst of everything. In the midst of everything. Understand that God loves people. In the midst of everything. Understand no matter your decree, no matter your laws, no matter your whatever it is. The love of God is towards people. Not principles. Amen. So they were arguing and arguing about it. And they were confused. Some said he is from God because he can't heal the blind. Some say he's from the devil and all the ups and downs. But the whole point is that it's jealousy. The whole point is that it is politics. The whole point is that they are afraid of the people trusting Jesus and they are running out of business. So it's a, a selfish motive and all of that. But that's not really where I'm, I, I'm I, I, I'm coming to that's what really what God wants me to share with you on today. I want to share with you a little about walking in the shoes of the blind man and not even walking in the shoes of the blind man um, as he relates to the, 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 the Pharisee and the leadership. But I want you to understand something that God showed me whilst I was studying. Interestingly, I did not know that at this point the man in question actually has never seen Jesus before. I was reading through as he interacted with the leadership and he was telling them that, hey, I believe he's a prophet and all that. The man was so convinced. And so if, you, if I kept reading and Jesus met him again and the guy didn't know it was Jesus who healed him. I mean, the guy didn't know the one he's speaking to was actually the person that healed him. But previously he was defending, he was fighting for him, but he has never even seen him before. Because when Jesus touched him, at that time the guy couldn't see. And, and Jesus sent him away. So the place he, his eyes opened, Jesus was not there. So he was speaking for Jesus without never laying eye on him before. 
and people that had seen Jesus 20, I mean, for all his years, were talking against him. But a person who have never seen physically Jesus before was speaking. With him. And then the Lord said, that is what I want you to tell my people. I can bless them in the dark. So walk with me as we look at the first part, I was blind. And we're going to talk about now I can see. So the word I was blind and I can see is really between that two words is what we call blessing in the dark so here is the message um some of you don't know what you're looking at you can see clearly you are in a dark place you can see or sense god's presence you cannot uh, figure out where you are going things don't look good for you things don't look okay but god says tell them i can bless them with no 2020 vision in other words in other words god says now I can bless you even though you don't see clearly. Amen. I, 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 you, you, you are touching things and you are moving your hands and you can really navigate. Things don't begin to add up. But God says that you don't have to be able to even to see me for me to do something good for you. This is not, this is not by sight. I, your sight can go. And when I say your sight is going, in other words, your plans has hit the wall. You have come to a place where you cannot see anything. You cannot see the light at the end of the tunnel. You are in a gloomy place. You are in a very dark place. But that says the living God, I can bless you in the dark. Because, oh God. So he says, now he ministered to the man in the dark. The man received from God even though he couldn't see. The man had a conversation. So God is saying for me to tell you that he's going to bless you in the dark. He's going to bless you in the place where you cannot find strength. He's going to bless you in a place where it looks like your vision is gone. He's going to bless you in the midst of the dark. Hallelujah. So next time, this time, any time, you find yourself in a dark place. Remember that God can bless me in the dark. Remember that God can bless me in the dark. Darkness. Great darkness surrounds Dark clouds, amen. Some of us, there's a dark cloud that surrounds our lives. There is a dark message surrounding our lives. But I came to announce to you that God says he will bless you in the dark. Hallelujah. He will bless you. Oh, he will bless you in the dark. He will bless you in the dark. He will bless you. He will minister to you whilst you can see clearly. He will minister to you whilst you can see the next door. He will minister to you whilst you can see the next step. He will minister to you whilst you can see your next round. He will minister to you whilst you can see your next daily bread. He will minister to you right in the dark in your darkest moment he will still minister to you hallelujah i cannot see lord god says uh it's okay it's not a requirement it's not a requirement for you to see before i can bless you you don't have to see your husband before you can believe I can give you a husband. You don't have to see your next job before you can believe I can give you a next job. You don't have to see your child before you can, you can get pregnant. You don't have to see because we have taught it. We have taught it that hey, you got to see it before you receive it. If you see me go, you will get it. Hey, uh, God says, uh, you, you, you don't limit, don't limit me. Don't limit me, says the Lord. I can give you what you have not seen. If you can hear me, you can get it. I'm so glad faith doesn't come by seeing. Faith comes by hearing. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. You can hear me, you will get it. Hallelujah. So, so I want you to understand this. Before I wrap up, let me give you a bonus message. Your, 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 your looks is not how people believe you. It is your doing. Amen. How you look is not how people believe you. It's what you do. Because the guy never saw Jesus, but he experienced what Jesus did and believed Jesus without ever laying eyes on Jesus. Amen. So don't worry too much. It's all about, it's all about experience. Hallelujah. It's how you make people feel. That makes you uh, a, a marriage material. Don't worry too much about how you look. Don't pay too much money to look good. 
Uh, because because you, you are going to be a wife because of what you do, not how you look. You are going to be a husband, not because of your six pack, but because of how you behave. Hallelujah. Jesus has taught me today that you somebody can fall in love with you and they have never seen you before, but they've just seen what you do. Hallelujah. They've just experienced your, your kindness. They've just experienced your love. Hallelujah. And so the man receive a blessing. May you receive your blessings in the dark this month. And some of you, I prophesy a blessing in the dark. By the time this month is over, you will come out of the darkness and you will come into the light. By the time this month is over, you will come out of financial darkness into the light. By the time the month is over, you come out of spiritual darkness into light. Any assignment of the evil one, any assignment from the dark world that is fashioned against your life. I come as a prophet of God. I come as a man of God. I come as a a servant of God, I come as a child of God, and I declare let there be light right here, right now, over your life. I cast away every darkness and I pronounce light. The Bible says, it says that let there be light in your life. Let there be light in your marriage. Let there be light in your education. Let there be light in your family. Let there be light in your health. In Jesus' mighty name, let there be light. I prophesy light into your dark places. Receive your sight and move forward. In Jesus' name, amen.